Now, if you're calling by phone, please dial star nine. Uh, please be patient because we're going to get to every single person. So if you'd like to speak to us, that will happen. You have three minutes. If you're representing an organization, which you should state, you will have five minutes. James will let you know when you have one minute remaining. Barbara, when you're ready, would you please announce the first member of the public? Hello. Okay, good. My name is Lisa Carlin, and I'm a member of the community, but I'm also part of the Defend Biona Wetlands uh, newly formed group, and we're we're concerned with the bulldozing, the so-called restoration project at the Biona Wetlands, which is 640 acres. So I'd like to talk today a little bit about public access to this area and actually the denial of public access because the public does not have access now. And also our 20 point uh, option for gentle restoration project. Let me just move this over so I can get to that. So um, it's important to understand that we're being uh, deliberately confused. And I'll digress for a moment. We see large corporations use that as a strategy to get people off the point. Uh, case in point, the tobacco industries did that by confusing everyone. And why do I say that? Because I was part of the team that obtained information from the Freedom of Information Act and saw um, government uh, data. And, it's, and the data that came from the tobacco industry said across the top in big bold letters, remember, confusion is our product. And that was how the tobacco industry was able to uh, to become successful in spite of all of the health health issues. We're seeing a very similar strategy being taken place taking place now in the Biona Wetlands by Southern California Gas and those related entities. They're trying to confuse us and call this a restoration. It is not a restoration. You can't simply bulldoze that entire area and start over and say, oh, we restored it. And why are they doing this? They're doing it because there are uh, gas tanks below beneath the Biona wetlands and they want to restore this for fossil fuel storage. Aren't we moving away from fossil fuels? Why don't they just seal it off, let it be, and let the the area of the Biona wetlands retain its pristine beauty? Now I've sat on many calls with various commissions and I will tell you that they say over and over again um, the hired hands, the people that are hired to oppose I mean, I'm not getting paid. I'm not part of any entity that gives me any money from doing this, nor are all the other activists. But the people who are getting paid are the people who are the scientists who are the hired hands to try to confuse everybody. And I highlight that word confused. They say and they show photos that say this area is dead. It needs to be restored. If anybody goes to our website, defendbionawetlands.org, you can see time-stamped photographs of the wildlife who reside in the Biona wetlands. And some of them are endangered species. So to have the hired hands come in and confuse everybody is an abomination. So this is not a restoration and we need to find a more gentle uh, way of doing that. And we've devised a 20 point plan and I'm gonna read just a couple of items from the 20 point plan. And I think Marsha Hanscom is gonna speak in a while also. Um, and she can talk about uh, access to this particular pro uh, this particular document. But you know, we say we need to, you know, I'm gonna read, um, I can't hear you. I'm not sure if, if we lost you. Uh, it was an accident. Okay. Give me a moment. This is Lisa Carlin. Yeah. Lisa. There we go. Can you yeah. hear me now? We accidentally yeah. muted you. There's a lot going on in, in the participation. Okay. All right. So um, I'm just, can you tell me where I, where you stopped hearing me so I don't repeat myself? I was talking about Marsha Hanskin is going to talk about the gentle alternative. Right. You're, you're about to list your, your points. Yes. Okay. There's 20 points. I'm just going to read the top three. Not that the top three are any more important than any other point is important. But one of the things uh, that we're asked, and, and the point is that these can all be done without an EIR or an EIS. And it has will have a minimal impact. 
um, uh, in, <coughs> minimal, minimal impact in terms of we don't have to to have these other documents or the EIR. This can, they can this can take place and it will be very easy to do. So number one is to form an indigenous tribal council for Biona consisting of elders of the indigenous people for the LA coast which would guide protection uh, decisions for the land and which would be given access for historical lifeway activities such as gathering for prayers and other spiritual, religious, and sacred ceremonies and gathering plants for medicinal and basketry purposes. That would be a good thing. Number one, to open the Fiji Way public access trail that has already been improved with thousands of dollars spent on amenities like bike racks, new gates, signage, and sitting benches. One minute remaining. I'm sorry? One minute remaining. Okay, and number three, um, improve and open walking trails on the city-owned Kabora Drive with minimal improvements such as directional and educational signage, including apps, audio guides for sophisticated learning that informs visitors of the history of the landscape and the flora and fauna that currently flourishes in Biona. So in closing, there is this 20 point plan. We would like to get this plan to you so you can read all 20 points. And this would be a gentle restoration that would not sacrifice the, the 1700 species of wildlife who reside in the Biona wetlands and call that their home. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Ms. Barber, our next speaker. Yes, we have Marsha Hanscom, and Marsha also has a PowerPoint presentation. Marsha, you may unmute, and I'm going to get your PowerPoint loaded. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Marsha, welcome. Good to see you again. Great. Thank you, Emma. This is Chair. Like yours, Marsha, that I have on the screen? Yes, that's it. Okay, I will start the slideshow now. Are you ready? Yes, ready. Okay. So, uh, honorable board members, um, I'm wanting to speak to you about mindful public access at the Biona Wetlands State Ecological Reserve, which has been denied for more than 15 years. Next slide. In September 2003, when the Wildlife Conservation Board allocated $140 million toward the public acquisition of the Bayona Wetlands, Michael Flores, who was the chair, stressed the need for public access in an area so close to a big urban population. The executive director of this board then, quote, assured everything possible would be done to make the property available for public access. Next slide. And yet, yeah, there has been diminished public access at Biona. This is not private property since 2004, yet private property signs like this are still present in numerous locations. Next slide. In 2005, the Fish and Game Commission designated areas A, B, and C and the Biona Creek Estuary in the midst of these lands as a state ecological reserve. And at that time, also, public access was raised by board members as being crucial to this reserve. Next slide. Here's a map of the Biona Wetlands Ecological Reserve. And the, our, our opponents on this would say, oh, we have plenty of public access. Well, it's just not true. At the west end of Area B, three hours once a month, LA Audubon Society has public access and occasionally brings school groups in. Otherwise, no public access in this area. Area C, Little League, has limited public access. Otherwise, no, no one else is allowed when they're there or otherwise. And then Area A, off of Fiji Way, it has no public access. The only other access is to private schools that have to pay to have their children take tours with friends of Biona Wetlands. Next slide. In Area A, however, the MRCA installed these beautiful artistic gates. Next slide. In 2011, $280,000 was granted by the State Coastal Conservancy to the MRCA for public access for this site. And in the agreement, it said, quote, the grantee shall implement a comprehensive and strategic set of minor improvements, such as new gates, new fences, weeding, minor habitat restoration and signage. And they did that. 
And then it's also said the grantee shall promote public awareness, interpret the natural resources, discourage illegal access, and increase opportunities for a pub positive public use of the site. Next slide. And here from the sky, you can see the Fiji Way Trail that was improved in, in Area A. Uh, next slide. As part of the 2011 $280,000 grant, MRC also, MRCA also installed monuments on the bike path, which is already open, but Area A on the left in this picture is closed. Next slide. Bike racks, as you can see here, were installed but not used. The weeds are growing up all around them. This photo was taken from outside of the lock gate. Next slide. And again, these beautiful gates were uh, installed <laughs> in the summers of 2010 and 2011. The MRCA opened this gate for a few open house Saturday mornings. And other than this, a uh, limited opening and two Saturdays in 2013, the gate has been closed to the public and it's locked. Next slide. Nice signage was installed at the trailhead, granted again by the State Coastal Conservancy, but access to this is not open. One minute remaining. Okay, um, next slide. This is next slide. Next slide, next slide, next slide. Uh, next slide. Next slide. You can see that the public is locked out. When we do tours, we do them on the edges of the wetlands. We aren't able to get inside. Next slide. And you can see there's the lock. Private business is allowed in, so Cal Gas and someone has persuaded CDFW to not open the public access, but to tie public access to a destructive project that would destroy the habitat there. They don't want the public to see the abundance of wildlife there. This land is not dead and dying. Next slide, please. We would like you to use your clout as members of the Joint Powers Authority, known as the MRCA, which received the grant money to open this access site. Ask CDFW to work with MRCA and the stakeholder groups to open mindful, docent, supervised public access at the Fiji Way Gate. Next slide. That's time. Please help us unlock the gate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next speaker, Suzanne Cumming. Good morning, honorable board members. My name is Suzanne Cumming. I'm an attorney. I live in Mariner's Village in Marina Del Rey, and I'm a member of Sierra Club and the Van Bayona Wetlands. Thank you for the incredible amount of money that you have invested already in the wetlands installing the gate, the bike racks, the signage, and everything else. As you heard, the Fiji Way gate is closed. Uh, this public money is going to waste all the investments. And so we are asking you to please help us open the gates now. And uh, to stop the destructive bulldozing and... and and to we ask you to place on your agenda support for EIR option four, the gentle alternative that you heard Marcia speak about. This is a 20 point plan. Um, the Bayona wetlands is such an opportunity for the public and especially young people. There is a larger ecosystem at stake here. <laughs> The blue herons that feed in the wetlands build many of their nests in the pines and eucalyptus trees and Mariner's Village, where I live. Several years ago, management of Mariner's Village illegally cut down over 11 active blue heron nests, which upset so many people. Marcia Hanscom pulled together a mighty force who spoke out and now the trees and birds have more protection, but their feeding grounds are in danger. They feed in the Bayona wetlands. There's a whole ecosystem that is at risk here. Option four provides a wonderful opportunity for young people to learn about the whole ecosystem and how the herons that live in Mariner's Village feed in the, in the wetlands. Maybe 
we can put a hair and can here. Uh, there's so much that can be done with a gentle alternative that would, uh, uh, and please agendize option number four, the gentle alternative. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next speaker, Robert Vandehoek, and he has a PowerPoint to share that Chris, when Chris gets it up on the screen, Robert, you may begin. I will unmute you. Good morning, uh, President, uh, Chair, Feliz Navidad, Irma Munoz, uh, and happy holidays. My name is Robert uh, Roy uh, Underhook, and I am a United States uh, federal uh, professional wildlife biologist, management biologist, and botanist, and I'm speaking for the California and Californians for Defending Ecological Reserves. Next slide. Uh, area A is uh, the area of about 140 acres, and thank you for showing that. And uh, it's highlighted in green. It's adjacent to the Marina del Rey Yacht Harbor. So it shows wildlife connectivity to the waters of the marina because we have a tidal uh, slough in Area A at the north end along Fiji Way near uh, Lincoln Boulevard, and the Bayona Estuary, which is another wildlife corridor for animals coming from the sea, uh, and namely fish, but also amphibians and reptiles that come down from the Santa Monica Mountains through the urban river called the Bayona Creek and enter the estuary. And we have an overland wildlife corridor that comes from the Santa Monica Mountains, which is how the coyote uh, came to Bayona about 12 years ago. So recovery and healing is happening without any kind of a bulldozing project, just a passive waiting to see animals arriving. Next slide. Uh, the next series of photos are going to show different wildlife and wildflower species at the Bayona wetlands. On the left is the wandering skipper, um, may become listed as endangered with our new Secretary of Interior, Deborah Holland. Um, it was put at the Secretary of the Interior's desk during the Nixon administration, but has languished there. It's a very rare butterfly, and she can only lay her eggs on one plant, Desticulus spicato saltgrass. Uh, on the right is the California ground squirrel, an ecosystem engineer that aerates the soil and has numerous animals living in the burrow system during hibernation periods, like our native tree frog <coughs> and our very rare legless lizard, and is a prey item, of course, prey for hawks and owls. Next slide. This is the Lewis Evening Primrose, a California Native Plant Society high-level sensitive species, may be put on the endangered species list in the next few years by the California Fish and Game Commission. The red fruit below the flower is a capsule that's four angled and has approximately uh, 56 seeds uh, generally inside of the seed pod. And we're looking at a cryptogramic soil up close with sand grains. And it's part of area A that was never, uh, that's still at its original elevation and has that rare plant and um, cryptobiotic crust biological feature. Thank you, next slide. The burrowing owl likes to be at the cryptobiotic crust, searching for insects and lizards, and also on the salt flats in Area A, and is there right now. Uh, one just arrived last month for the winter, will be there for about three months, and lives along the estuary and perches on the ground uh, in Area A. Next slide. Uh, the Northern Harrier is a hawk that hunts by uh, sight, by uh, listening, not by sight. It has facial discs like owls, but is a hawk here on a snag, showing the importance of, of snags as habitat. Next slide. Uh, here is a dragonfly that is born and lives as a larva in the estuary in the brackish, slightly brackish waters, but close to fresh water. Uh, tall in quality and hunts over the grasslands of area A and is perched here, shown here perched briefly on a grassland species. Next slide. One minute remaining. Thank you. I'm gonna go quickly now because I'm running out of time. Um, I did get five minutes, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, this is a lichen of uh, the Santa Monica Mountains have uh, over 200 species of lichens, and the lichenologist you hired, Kerry Newson, came to Bayona on my invitation and found 17 species in just a few hours and predicted that about 200 species would be here too. You're seeing three species on this 
wood. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, this is a very delicate uh, metallic bee uh, on soils in areas. Next slide. Next slide. This is a black Phoebe with an insect prey. Next slide. There's a coyote in part of the grasslands of area A. Next slide. Daytime, uh, nighttime raccoon. That's to point out there's daytime and nocturnal and diurnal time uh, that hasn't been surveyed adequately. A raccoon. Next slide. Uh, coyote bush and uh, home for over 500 species of insects of a Stanford University 1950s PhD dissertation showing that. Next slide. Green heron at high tide with water in the slough in area A, uh, a fish hunter and a small crab hunter and on a daily basis at Biona and nest in area A. Next slide. Uh, he spells Vario now in Mexico for the winter, but will return again uh, this spring as they have for the last uh, 10 years. And it's with a federal and state endangered species that occurs in area A and in the estuary margins. Next slide. Northern Harrier, next slide. Is, was that someone speaking that my minute? Five yes. minutes? Okay. Yes. May I take a few seconds to just wrap up with, uh, yes. thank Sorry. you for, okay. Um, that I showed a pair of white-tailed kites, a state rare raptor that nests in the Santa Monica Mountains, but also nests at the Biona. This photo was just taken in the last few days. They're in courtship for the next few months. No nest building has occurred yet, and no sex or uh, has happened, but will in the next few months. And this is a, a courtship that they're doing, getting ready to nest, and they've nested many times over the last 15 years at Biona. All right, I just want to put in a, a, a brief statement to say, please preserve the uh, the Biona Wetlands that has a wildlife corridor and uh, connectivity to the Santa Monica Mountains and uh, needs to have the gentle alternative. Thank you. Next speaker, Lisa Levinson. Lisa, you may unmute. Thank you very much. So I'm Lisa Levinson with In Defense of Animals, an international animal protection nonprofit with 250,000 supporters and 25,000 in California. 12,000 of our supporters signed petitions to protect the Biona wetlands and stop the counterfeit restoration project that would bulldoze the area. Defend Biona Wetlands recently announced their new gentle restoration plan, as you heard, to foster species recovery and to improve public access without bulldozing the reserve. We ask the Conservancy Board to agendize the consideration for supporting option number four, the gentle alternative for the Biona wetlands. We love the gentle restoration plan because it opens the Fiji Way public access, improves and opens the walking trails on city-owned Kobora Drive, funds and supervises docent training programs at newly opened walking trails and opens the Biona Creek South Levy for walking only. We believe the implementation of docent and youth ranger programs will teach respect and sustainability principles. Please read the 20 point plan at defendbionawetlands.org. It's actually only a couple of pages, so it's well worth your time to read that. Currently only in a small area of Biona, uh, public access is available for specific groups that have had access for many years. Please consider the gentle restoration, which can accomplish all of the goals of the counterfeit restoration, except refurbishing the gas storage facilities beneath the wetlands. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Carolyn. Next speaker, thank you. Next speaker, Jane Velez Mitchell. Go ahead, Jane. Hi, uh, my name is Jane Velez Mitchell. I'm a journalist and author, and I live near the Biona wetlands, and I am a Latina. And of course, I want to see the children of Los Angeles have more access to public space. I work via nonprofits to help achieve that. That's why. Uh, it obviously makes no sense to me and hundreds and hundreds of other people who are rising up against the destruction of the Biona wetlands to destroy it uh, under the guise that you're going to provide public access to it when currently there is a big gate that was built at public 
expense that remains locked, and SoCal Gas has the key. There are existing trails that could be used now. They could be upgraded, and we could let those children in now, as opposed to um, this contortion, options one, two, and three, which is really designed to achieve the agenda of the fossil fuel industry, which we all know has a crumbling gas storage facility under the wetlands that they need to upgrade uh, to avoid another Aliso Canyon disaster. And so they've created this faux, phony um, restoration, in quotes, that um, is really designed to achieve that agenda. The legitimate goals of restoration can be achieved with this new 20-point plan that has been presented that would fall under the category of option four. Those who want to bulldoze Biona call that the do-nothing option. That's because they left it blank intentionally so that the, everybody would focus on options one, two, and three, which is the wrecking ball option. So option four provides for a gentle restoration that would allow for public access right now. And I urge everybody to consider it. Uh, the truth is that I live right here. Burton Chase Park is a park, okay? Kids need a different kind of experience. They need to experience the wildlife. These inner city children need to have an experience of the natural world. That's what they could have right now at the Biona Wetlands Ecological Reserve. There are 1,700 species time stamp photographs documenting these species, some endangered, some threatened, we could provide a meaningful, meaningful experience for these inner city kids, that they could come there, they could walk on the upgraded trails, they could learn from docents and from kiosks about the rich history of the indigenous people who once called this area home, about all the species who live there currently, egrets and pelicans and skunks and owls, various species of owls, and the list goes on and on. The idea that in the name of public access, you are going to take a wrecking ball to one square mile, the last coastal wetlands in Los Angeles, and you're going to call that a restoration, it really boggles the mind. And that's why people are rising up. Uh, people are rising up and saying, no, Wrecking balls are 20th century solutions. We are in the 21st century. We are in the midst of a pandemic, which is a zoonotic illness, which jumped from animals to humans. We need to change our relationship with the natural world. Governor Gavin Newsom has called for nature-based solutions. We need to start treating our wild areas with respect. Our destruction is not restoration. Obliteration is not restoration. And I'll tell you what else isn't restoration, respectfully, a 300 car parking garage. Who's gonna get that contract? I live in the area, I know there is tons of public parking already there. We need to look at this with a critical eye because this was designed not to provide public access. They are holding public access hostage right now so they can make the argument that they need to provide public access. We could open the gates, do some mindful upgrades, and have wonderful, meaningful public access to the children of Los Angeles right now. One minute remaining. With the plan, the bulldozing plan that is being proposed by those who, let's face it, have received donations from SoCal Gas, it would be a decade before kids would have public access. It would be off limits to the public for a decade. That means 10 year olds would be in their 20s before they could even visit this area. It truly does not make sense. I respectfully implore you to look at the 20 point gentle restoration plan, which would fall under option four and take the nature-based solution. And um, let's provide uh, the children of Los Angeles with a meaningful public experience at the Bayona Wetlands Ecological Reserve now. Thank you. Day, so January 11th right now is tentative. Um, and I would like to ask if we can get a copy of that 20 point plan uh, from the Bayona Wetlands that they referred to on a number of occasions, because I don't remember getting it. James, did you send it not to us? I don't believe I've seen it. Uh, I'll type my email address here in the chat, and so uh, if someone can send it to me, that would be great. Um, I'm not sure this is an appropriate request, but can we get a, a staff response of the assertion of denial of public access to the wetlands? 
or is that something that we should agendize and then have a thorough conversation on it? Chair and members, uh, it's certainly appropriate for you to respond to uh, the public and to agendize issues that the public has, has raised. We're pretty strong about the idea that this is outside the Santa Monica Mountain Zone. The Mountain Recreation Conservation Authority did accept a contract willingly, and we were happy to do that from the State Coastal Conservancy. Uh, we implemented that. The MRCA Rangers at um, previous times have been called upon under contract uh, to deal with issues there uh, at the wetlands, but it is not per se a Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy issue. We just don't have jurisdiction. And so while it would be an interesting thing, and we're all concerned environmentally, uh, for us to weigh in and to do a fair job of it. I mean, these are documents that um, I think OSHA doesn't even allow one person to, to lift the documents that are associated with this. So for us to do a really thorough evaluation, the kind of evaluation that as a state agency we need to do, and there are so many other state agencies involved. There's a resources agency overall, which uh, superintends uh, the various entities such as the Wildlife Conservation Board, such as the State Lands Commission, and most importantly, the Department of Fish and Wildlife that owns the property. And so for us, for us to try to duplicate the work there, and then to respond to all the work that's being done by the uh, nonprofit organizations out there. And they've done a huge amount of work. Uh, for us to try to condense and evaluate all that for you on a property that is not within the Santa Monica Mountain Zone, uh, we think that, that, frankly, the opponents are, are trolling for state agencies. And I don't think we should be the state agency that they're trolling for. Okay. Um, I hear what you're saying, Joe. However, haven't we written letters of support for other issues that we are not have our hands right in the middle of and that we don't have maybe uh, jurisdiction? I remember writing, I remember supporting other projects um, uh, or making comments of, for consideration. So am I mistaken? Or is this something? No, Madam, Madam Chair, first of all, as the chair, you're never mistaken. Well, that's good to hear. Tell my husband that. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a it's a question of degree. This issue is so important and so fraught with controversy that to do a fair job of it. Remember, we're not just a run-of-the-mill nonprofit. Right. Official state agency that has, look at all of our membership, uh, for us to do a fair and adequate job uh, would require a huge amount of energy to independently. This is the whole thing. Our job is not simply to say, okay, we're going to tag on to somebody else who's doing a good thing. And yes, we've said uh, for non-controversial projects and other things, we've said, yeah, good job. Uh, we're going to add our, our, our name to the list. But this is a wildly different um, kind of a project. And uh, you would just suck up so much energy because I can, I can tell you that when we're uh, joining the consuls of the uh, Natural Resources Agency, they're going to say, what is your expertise? What, how have you evaluated all of this? And uh, I, I believe that the best thing that, that can happen in, in, right now is that the governor appoints a blue ribbon committee to evaluate all the proposals. This uh, 20 po point proposal has uh, come in the, uh, the, uh, the moderate, lesser, uh, soft alternative, as it were, uh, has come in relatively recently. Uh, maybe there should be an independent commission that evaluates this, uh, and, and I would support that. Uh, and I think maybe we ought to support that. But for us to put our expertise on the line here and ultimately depend defending on what you say for example if you were to say we oppose this uh, and then there's a lawsuit and then we have to be deposed 
and then we have to explain all of the rationale and the reasons. Uh, you're sucking up a huge amount of energy. You've seen, Madam Chair, you've seen the the uh, public attention and concern to this item. Right. I I, I I just believe it would it would detract from the genuine work that we have in the Santa Monica Mountain Zone. You've seen other so many other items on this agenda, mm -hmm. uh, which are going to suck up all of our energy. So my recommendation, Madam Chair, is we've heard this. Uh, important decision makers have been on the uh, online. Uh, if you want to agendize that, obviously it's up to the board to do it. But I would strongly urge that uh, uh, if we do anything, we we ask the governor uh, to personally take. Uh, uh, or the Natural Resources Agency, rather, uh, to take cognizance of this and maybe appoint a blue ribbon panel or something. And if you say that that's uh, punting the football, there's a reason that the rules of football allow a punt. I'm a basketball person, but okay, I'll believe you. Okay, uh, um, are there comments on this? I have, a, I have a comment, Irma. I mean, a few comments. Uh, it's Wendy Rosen. Um, Joe, here's, here's how I feel about this. I've been sitting on this board for 12 or 13 years, and in that time, we took hundreds of thousands of dollars through the MRCA to do improvements at Biona. That then became an obligation we, of we shall. Did, that's not true. That's not true. Well, I've seen the documents, and they're signed. Um, and no, and it says... Those, excuse me. Those documents were from the State Coastal Conservancy, or the MRCA. That gave money to the conservancy to build improvements no. at Bayona no. and docent tours. Wendy, the answer is no. It was to the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority. Well, I think I just said that, didn't I? No, you said conservancy. Sorry, to the MRCA. I stand corrected. Sorry. Um, to build, let me start over. Um, there are contracts of money from the State Coastal Conservancy to the MRCA for hundreds of thousands of dollars to build improvements at the Bono Wetlands for gates, for um, signage, for educational, um, and for docent tours. And and I've been to, I've, I've been to the dedications to some of those, uh, to some for some of that money that went into that and for, for the openings, for the grand openings to those to those improvements. When this came before us about a year, year and a half ago, the, the EIR, the draft EIR, we had a very uh, serious conversation because documents were not attached to the file. Um, I protested because we could not find the, the EIR documents. Um, and we put a comment letter in the record, not the MRCA, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy put a comment letter in. And access here is going to be degraded. I have now read the entire draft EIR. I have read it. And if you read this draft EIR, you cannot believe that this project is going to go forward because it is so ridiculous. There are so many reasons why. But the main one for me and, and for this organization is access. And, and we wrote a letter into the record. So, you know, my feeling is if we are going to participate by having our joint agency take money in, that basically, you know, says shall, and it's for purposes of access, and that is what we are about, is access, to know that for the last 10 or 15 years, we have had limited access to this property in an area that is underserved. And right now, during COVID, we have seen, what is the demand? Access, people need to be outdoors, and we have 600 acres locked to the public. Limited access is allowed. Uh, but not to the underserved communities. We cannot get the underserved communities on that land. And those gates can be opened now. There are trails now. There are improvements that you made through the MRCA now. And it makes no sense that we, that we have locked gates. I mean, I went to take a tour there with the um, state controller who basically pays the salaries of fish and, 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 and wildlife and we were thrown off the property by the Fish and Wildlife Warden who came onto the property and started screaming at us that we were trespassing on public land. This is outrageous. So I would just say that, you know, our agency, it, you know, if it's a blue ribbon panel that you're gonna that you're gonna ask for, I, I would say, you know, 
fine. Um, but I think that it's really important who participates in that panel. Um, and I would say, you know, Irma, that, that there should be more conversation about this land because what's going on there is just absolutely criminal. Okay. Comments. Madam Chair, I don't wish to get into any kind of a, um, a back and forth here. Okay. We are a state agency. The actual state agency with ownership is the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Just as if we were to say we don't like the management practices of state parks, but we would not be in a position to say we're going to go in there and change those management practices. We are not in a position with a state agency that has the jurisdiction, Department of Fish and Wildlife, we as a state agency are not really in a position to go and elbow in and say, we know how to, to manage your lands better. We're just not in that position. And to put us in that position uh, does not give us the kind of, of um, intellectual expertise that we want to carry forward where things are important, such as Bergruen, uh, such as uh, Mandeville Canyon, such as Benedict Canyon. You know, I hear exactly what you're saying, and I agree with you. However, my my focus is the denial of public access, and and why I have I have been on the board where we have written letters of support when we talk about public access. I don't think we're going to be stepping on any toes, and I don't think we're saying we want to be the great decision makers and we want to impose our will. But I do think that we can comment on the concern of the lack of public access. Um, there is a tremendous number of what people consider, consider, uh, consider underserved. I considered them ignored and overlooked. I have met with young people who would love to have access. So is, is the comment letter or um, a thought of we want to know about the denial of public access also inappropriate with your reasoning? Because I think that's a totally different issue than what issues you brought up. It's, it's public access is all I'm concerned about right now. Shall we talk more about it online? I'm not in a position to further comment. Uh, okay. you've, uh, you've expressed uh, the desire of the board. Well, actually, I'm expressing my desire. I haven't heard any other board members talk about this. So, okay. Uh, any other comments about any of our public? Um, Ms. Healy has a comment. Okay, please. Um, I would just like to see the letters that we did write um, to date on the Biona wetlands. And I see no problem with putting it on the agenda for, for, for further discussion in the near future after, I've see, after we've seen the letters. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There seems to be so much history that we're not fully aware of what's going on. And, and um, you know, Joe really has a handle on so much and understand all the intricacies. But when it comes to the denial of public access, that just is like surprising to me. Okay, why don't we move forward then um, to the consent calendar. If there's okay, can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm unmuted for you. Yes, we hear you. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, board members, committee members, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. I'm here on behalf of Californians for the Defense of Ecological Reserves. This is our second request for you as a member of the Joint Powers Authority of MRCA, as well as at Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy on its own, to send a letter to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife requesting that the public access at Fiji Way be opened as soon as possible. Next slide, please. So I just wanna, I, I know you've all received this ahead of time, but I just wanna make sure that you remember that this land was acquired with the purpose of saying that public access would be available. Next slide. Instead, we have signs like this for private property all over the, the um, site, including this one very close to the beautiful gate that you helped put up to open up at Fiji Way. Next slide. 
Um, in 2005, the Fish and Game Commission designated this as a state ecological reserve and also underscored the need to have public access to this site. Next slide. And here's a map of what, so again, so you can see where there is public access. There is absolutely no public access in Area A where we are talking about uh, 139 acres of land. Uh, the rest of the 640 acres of land has very diminished and minimal public access. Next slide, please. And in Area A, where we're talking about, these beautiful artistic gates were installed, but as you can see, it's locked. Next slide. Again, the, gra the grantee, MRCA, which your organization is a member of that Joint Powers Authority, said in this $280,000 that was granted that you would put up new fences, gates, weeding, put up bike racks, etc. And you did that. MRCA did that. And it, but what you haven't done is the other part that says increase opportunities for positive public use of the site. Next slide. Here it is from the sky, the way the birds would see it. Next slide. And as you can see, the bike racks are even, uh, you know, weeds are growing up around them because they're not being used. Next slide. And next slide. Next slide. Uh, this is an area where the county actually provided funds for putting up uh, various things that would promote public access. But again, the gate right behind this truck here that you all put up, a different gate, is also locked. Next slide. And in uh, February of 2020, just last year, Betty Yee, our State Lands Commission Chair and Controller, came to visit. And uh, next slide. You can see how she was greeted by the Department of Fish and Wildlife, who really was very upset that anyone was coming to this property with they really have a very tight rope on who is allowed and most of the public is not including apparently the person who signs the checks for the employees there next slide but here's the thing california department of fish and wildlife actually has a plan for opening up this site but someone whoever is behind this horrible, destructive plan that they want to do at Bayona has persuaded them to not open up this site, even though they have a plan, as you can see. Next slide. And it, the public access instead is being held hostage to this highly destructive plan. Next slide. The public is locked out. Keep going. Next slide. And next slide. We just want you to help us open up this site. We have been told by someone at Fish and Wildlife that if you were to, to send a letter, that might make a difference in whether they opened up this site. So that's why we're asking you, please send a letter to Fish and Wildlife and help us unlock the gate. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, next speaker listed. Jamie P. Jamie Perlman. My name is Jamie Pullman. I am on Cumberland and I'm a climate reality leader with the Climate Reality Project. I believe my public comment is about number nine. One, I you know the public access to this site now should be allowed. Uh, the state of California spent significant money to improve the Fiji Ray Gate Access Trail in 2011. Number two, the EIR was certified, but the proposed project for Bologna is far from certain. The Army Corps of Engineers did not even have a proposal on their desk now from what we have learned. The state had to state all over with them due to the blood risk standards that were not properly used in the planning of this proposed project. Number three. We would like Santa Monica Mountain Conservancy to review the 20-point plan for a gentle restoration of Bologna. Ask your staff to review it and consider supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker, Sophia Morales. And Sophia, you had a presentation, correct? 
Yes, please. Okay. It might be a little off because it's a PDF file. <laughs> oh, you got a micrograph. Yeah. So, so hi, my name is Sophia. I'm with the Bayona Wetlands Land Trust, and I mostly work with education and outreach. And as we keep, if you can be, keep scrolling down. Um, so as you all may know, the pandemic has made basically any in-person activities or field trips unavailable because it's unsafe. So we resorted to a lot of virtual um, touring of the Bayona wetlands. And in, during this uh, Bayona wetlands touring, we usually give them information. Uh, we discuss topics such as wildlife, um, watershed, wetlands, um, habitat, and conservation and stewardship. But we also like to promote, for example, this is Lisa, one of my coworkers, and the other slide is me. Um, and we like to promote different career options that could be available for students to encourage them and also at, help them inspire them, but also ask questions. We were both, both raised in LA, uh, very urban, but we all had an experience in our youth, which has impacted us in the future as a result coming to this career option that we're in right now. But we also, if you can move down to the tips to ID birds, the slide. So also we like to discuss ways for the students to be connected to nature, even through these difficult times. For example, going to visit a local park and doing a little bit of explore, exploration and something that they can explore is birds. So I being birds. So um, hopefully on um, the future when it's safe to do so um, pre and post pandemic, right? Um, uh, for example, us in the past, before the pandemic started, we would um, rent these buses and go to these different schools. If you can scroll down to the next slide and give them a brief introduction of the Biola wetlands and then bring them down to the wetlands. If you can scroll down as well. So they can have that experience that a moment in, in person, um, at, you know, exploration of the wetlands so they can learn more. As we scroll down, um, we also had the, the LA Audubon, the docents give these tour guides and if you can keep scrolling down and they would have that opportunity. So but a lot of times in this cases, um, we would have to close the opportunity to a lot of students or well, a lot of classes where we couldn't either, the LA Audubon didn't have any enough open spaces or we couldn't organize the time or the day and what an option that we came up with is potentially when it's obviously safe to do so, um, opening area A for these field trips. Um, and this is just an example of what could be, um, obviously have a safety brief and have, for example, a couple of stations on these mm -hmm. pre-established trails. Um, that's yeah. a possibility that could be occurring. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for letting me be here. Thank you. Next speaker, Lisa Levinson. So I'm Lisa Levinson with In Defense of Animals, an international animal protection nonprofit with 250,000 supporters. And over 12,000 of them have signed petitions to protect Bayona wetlands and stop the counterfeit restoration project that would bulldoze the area. Instead, we support Defend Bayona Wetlands' new gentle restoration plan to foster species recovery and improve public access without bulldozing the reserve. Please support option number four, which is the gentle alternative for the Bayona Wetlands. We love this gentle restoration plan because it opens public access, improves and opens the walking trails on city-owned Cabora Drive, funds and supervises docent training programs at the newly opened walking trails, and it opens the Bayona Creek uh, sub south levy for walking only. And we believe the implementation of docent and youth ranger programs will teach respect and sustainability principles, as you just heard in the previous presentation. The Gentle Restoration Plan also forms recovery teams to bring back the Roadrunner, Jackrabbit, California Quail, Horned Lizard, Garter Snake, Bald Eagle, Snow Goose, Sandhill Crane, and Southern Sea Otters to Biona. Bulldozing Biona would destroy the habitat for rare white-tailed kites and 
Currently, two to three of these majestic raptors currently forage in the Biona grasslands, which is one of the most diminished California habitats. Please read and support the 20-point plan at defendbionawetlands.org. Currently, only a small area of Biona has public access through limited groups that have had access for many years. Please send a letter to open public access to Biona and to support the gentle restoration, which can accomplish all of the goals of the counterfeit restoration, except refurbishing the gas storage facilities beneath the wetlands. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Next comment. Okay, am I in now? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, I, I want to share with you, I was at the marina this past weekend and walked all around, went to the mall, got great food, and went over to, you know, the loveliest neighborhood surrounding the, the Bologna wetlands um, that I discovered. And, wow, I was just thinking they must be the luckiest residents in Southern California. I mean, the view, the peacefulness, the fresh air, and the open space. Um, you know, I took some pictures of it, and I was, I was just uh, blown away. And that's why I am in full support of, of asking you all to please help uh, protect this area. And I heard that there was uh, 12,000 members who signed to protect this area. And then I know that there's another petition, defendbelowinawetland.org, that has a, a separate petition with over 9,000 people who want to protect this area. So that's very impressive. And I want you all to know that. Um, and, you know, other aspect of this is that we really depend on you folks. Um, you're experts in this area with your um, connections, your you know politics and access to financial resources and um, to help us protect this place. We need 100% from each and one of you because it seems like the op opposition um, is operating at 200% to exploit areas like this, uh, exploit nature, exploit wildlife. And <coughs> We really depend on you. I hope you all know how much the public depend on you. Um, I mean, it was just heartbreaking to hear that the head of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife was orchestrating to build 1,200 luxury homes on a San Diego um, uh, protected ecological area. I mean, we're so glad that did not pass. But is that what we're facing? Is the head of that department who was supposed to protect wildlife, an open area, orchestrate something like this? How does that even get on the table of discussion? I really would like to know that. How does it ever happen with the idea to build more homes on an area that's designated as a reserve, potentially have homes built on it? So as a member of public, I mean, all of this, it just smells like, I don't know, you know, politics, corruption, major conflict of interest, greed, and, uh, you know, we really would, would depend on you to not do any of that that I just spoke of. And, you know, I've heard that members, public members who speak at your meetings have been called trolls. Um, I'm, you know, that's actually frightening and, and extremely intimidating. I'm speaking, I'm feeling nervous. I don't know, you know, you all are esteemed, respected folks. And if you're going to be calling us a, a public member, a, a troll, that, that is just really intimidating. And I, I um, you know, I'm trying to get my friends to participate, but if they're going to be faced with this type of sort of um, hostility, it, it's going to be really hard to encourage people to speak up. I mean, we're nervous already. This process is complicated and I don't know, getting the time right, joining the agenda item and being lined up and not being called and waiting. And it's a bunch of confusion. And I can see why the public is, is scared to do this. And so I speak for my friends who want to do this, but they're intimidated. Um, you know, I, I would just like to feel more support. I mean, I've, I've got somebody who answered some of the questions that I had about how to, you know, access this. But, you know, most people would just give up and walk away. And I hope I'm speaking to for a lot of my friends who would love to do this, but they're just intimidated. 
and they surely want to protect all this open area. We live here in Southern California. This is our last wetland, and we've seen these presentations that are so impressive uh, for the wetlands for adults and children to enjoy, to learn from, and to develop our sense of empathy for our land, for people, for wildlife. And this can only do good, and we do not want those gas tanks to be dug up, to be restored under the Bologna wetlands. Uh, we've been out there, and we've seen all these large structures of pipes and metals and trucks. that They do not belong there. It looks awful. It, it's quite scary to see that happening to an area designated as an ecological reserve. And... Um, yeah, we read about this 20-point plan that looks amazing. I heard someone mention about, um, you know, a couple things from there. But, you know, they've got cons. They're so thoughtful. Recover the southern sea otter to Bologna. Design an oversee project to recover the snow goose and sandhill crane. And form a plant assessment team that will study and learn all the native and uh, plants and all the wildlife that's there. Uh, establish a native plant and tree nursery for replanting, and um, form you know stakeholder groups to to include so many different people, and also including the indigenous tribal council for Bologna um, to like as a group form what is best for this area. Um, Whoever put this together, those points are just the most kind, thoughtful, and on the side of nature and wildlife. And I'll tell you, the public, when we see this, we are so impressed. And we so much want to put our efforts and support behind this. And if you all have any questions. I I just want to remind you that there's a number of people also waiting. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to respect their time, too. So thank I, you. I totally agree. Um, uh, thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, next speaker, please. Mary Beth Troutwine. Hi, good morning. This is Mary Beth Troutwine. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, thank you for um, taking public comment today. I'm calling. To, I'm speaking today um, about access gates to Area A on Fiji, Fiji Way. Um, just to reemphasize what Marsha and Sophia with the Land Trust have also, and other speakers have said, um, that this is an important area. I'm an avid biker around the area, and it would add to the safety as well as public enjoyment and understanding of the area to have this area open. Um, I encourage you to send a letter to California Fish and Wildlife in support of opening this area, since in the past um, your group has committed funds, substantial public funds, to having public access. Um, and then I just want to segue for 30 seconds. Um, earlier in public comments, I heard the name Ron Webster. Um, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I got to know the Santa Monica Mountains by working on trails with Ron Webster. Um, he and Marianne were, as this other speaker said, amazing individuals in support of the Santa Monica Mountains. And even though it's been eons since I've had any encounters with Ron, he totally ignited my love of the area, whether it's biking in the marina in Playa del Rey or it's hiking in Santa Monica Mountains. Um, And opening access to Bayona wetlands through a community projects and community centered aspects, such as the Defend Bayona Defend Bayona Wetlands 20 point plan. It's very community oriented and getting more people involved to understand the nature that we have here. The wetlands being a very important part of that. So thank you for your time today. And um, I do hope that you'll be able to get back to us about how this is proceeding. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Molly Bassler. Yes. Hello. I'm Molly. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Yeah, I'm a climate reality leader, environmentalist activist. I've spoken before you before, and um, I just want to remind everybody, I'm going to time myself so um, I don't (laughs) go over. Um, You know, we are in a climate emergency. We are in a climate crisis. Our planet is dying. And if our planet dies, so shall we. 
It is time to protect all public lands, all sacred spaces, animals, people. Put them before profit. Uh, Biona Wetlands needs us to support, uh, to get SoCal gas out of there. We don't know. I don't, I mean, we really don't know what they're doing, except the gates are locked and have been locked for a couple years. This is public land and needs to be open, especially in the middle of a pandemic when people will need to get outside, connect to nature. It's the one place we can go that is um, somewhat safe to see beauty. And it's just a travesty that the gates are locked. And that even when you go over there, which I have done, police were called. I was detained for an hour. Uh, three patrol cars and five police officers. And it was just, and just me, I'm, I was just out there taking some photographs and they accused me of trespassing and it's public land. I was on the street. So we need to come together on this and we have gone out there. We've brought public officials out there, you know, pleading for them to support opening the gates, protecting this sacred space from bulldozing. And nobody seems to be coming forth. That seems to me very odd that we aren't bending over backwards to protect our sacred spaces, get oil and gas off of the menu. We are supposed to be going into the Green New Deal, a green economy. Let's start now, because before it's too late, we are at a tipping point. And then when Biden comes in, you know, climate, cl the climate emergency is going to be one of the number one uh, issues to tackle. And so we have to start here in, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our city, in our state. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Robert Roy Vanderhoek. And, and Roy, I believe you have a PowerPoint. I do have a PowerPoint. Is it up? Here. Yes. Thank, thank you. My name is Robert uh, Roy Vandehook, and I'm a wildlife biologist botanist, as you see there with the Biona Institute. And I hope to con uh, make some uh, points here that uh, in the tour of the wildlife that I'm going to show you a linkage between uh, our, um, 11, your item 11, the Bear uh, Mountain Gate area in the Santa Monica Mountains, and the Biona okay. um, orientation map. There's three, four MRCA access gate points that have been made at the Biona. Uh, one is in area B, uh, one is in area A, one is near area C, and I'll leave it at that for the moment. Next slide. Okay, Lise Bells Virio. Used to nest in the Santa Monica Mountains, no longer. May nest again soon. And uh, Biona Wetlands represents that uh, jumping off linking point. Uh, our our Lise Bells Virio came from uh, San Diego at the Camp Pendleton base. And we have a nesting population for a decade now. And the numbers are increasing and they're gonna shortly move north to some of the canyon areas in the Santa Monica Mountains, even uh, Malibu Creek behind the dam. Next slide. White-tailed kite, they nest in the Santa Monica Mountains um, near Malibu Creek State Park. They fly over the mountains. They possibly fly over uh, the Getty and Mountain Gate on their way to Bayona and back and forth. Uh, an aerial uh, connectivity corridor. Next slide. Um, metallic bees, uh, insects generally. Uh, we, we have um, over 1,100 species of insects uh, at the Biona wetlands. Many of them are shared in common uh, with uh, species in the Santa Monica Mountains, showing a meta or ecological linkage um, in that way to keep... Uh, okay, next slide. Okay, the great blue heron. Uh, they fly over the Santa Monica Mountains to go to the LA River in Sepulveda and they come back over to Biona. There are numerous observations of them flying along 405 over Sepulveda Pass uh, and uh, stopping at some points. And uh, if we're going to have uh, nesting again in portions of the reservoirs and ponds in the Santa Monica Mountains, it's going to be the, the offspring of our herons that are. Uh, every year at Iona that are going to, and, and the LA River that are going to recolonize uh, parts of the Santa Monica Mountains. Next slide. Nice close up of an adult with that black crest and the flaring feathers on the throat, nesting in a pine tree in Mariner's Village, uh, but finding all of their prey in the Biona wetlands and all the young birds find their prey in the grasslands like small squirrels and mice. Next slide. 
okay, Burrowing Owl, definitely linked uh, to the Santa Monica Mountains where there are sightings. And also uh, we have one right now um, for the last uh, month, every day being seen at uh, Bayona. Next slide. Black crowned night heron, uh, the Native American indigenous word is waaka, and uh, in Spanish it's garza negra, and uh, black crowned night heron. Um, you can see that nice, uh, strong statement by one of our foremost naturalist writers, Terry Tempest Williams. Um, okay, next slide. Hermit warbler, western tanager, two migratory birds that uh, pass through the Biona wetlands, then stop in the Santa Monica Mountains um, on the way to further points north uh, to the mountains and uh, Cascades and uh, Pacific Northwest. Next slide. Okay, white crowned sparrow, common yellow throat, both birds that are found in the Santa Monica Mountains, and our individuals of these birds are seen everywhere at Biona, and some of them are coming from the Bionic Mountains. By the way, all the water coming off of the mountain gate and Bear Print goes down uh, Sepulveda uh, under, under the, along the 405 freeway and brings water to Biona wetlands, including prey and small animals that come in the storm water through the storm drains and then daylighted at Biona and help colonize our area. This is a Northern Harrier. Next slide. Okay, Lewis Primrose, candidate for species on the California Native Plant Society. Uh, it's supposed to be treated as an endangered species because of that status, but um, the state of California isn't doing their job. Next slide. Okay, loggerhead shrike, uh, soon to be on the endangered species list. Uh, beautiful predator bird, uh, likes to catch lizards. And some of our lizard species of the Biona wetlands came from uh, the Santa Monica Mountains during storm water events and, and a snake, ring neck snake. Thank you. Next slide. Green heron. They do nest in the Santa Monica Mountains and the fact that we have them nesting at Fiona is thankful to the, the offspring of the Santa Monica Mountains coming down here. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, a barn swallow, a neotropical migrant, comes up from Mexico every spring, a, a long distance uh, corridor species and some of the barn swallows nest in the Santa Monica Mountains too. Definitely linked uh, connectivity there. Next slide. Okay, lazuli bunting. Uh, this bird requires burned areas, so fire's not all bad. When, the, when you have a fire, then you get more of these nesting birds. Um, but of course, we want to have no structures damaged. Next slide. Okay, end of the slideshow. So I'll just wrap up in a few seconds here that in conservation biology science, we have something called sweepstakes dispersal, which means events can be rare, but they do connect. Uh, you might not think so, but there's probably a daily movement of coyote between the Santa Monica Mountains and Biona. And we know in 2008 uh, that the coyote that came to Biona and now breeds and has a, a population there is the Santa Monica Mountains coyote population owls pass back and forth between the two. I hope you don't develop the Bergshren property because the larkspur that's found there is the larkspur that was known at Biona until about 1910 when it went extinct in my long time. Vision dream has been to bring that native larkspur back to the sandy soils. You may not know it, but you have a lot of sandy soils and quasi sand dunes. Wherever you have sandstone outcrops in the Santa Monica Mountains, you have many sand dunes basically. Um, one more thought, the roadrunner and quail that probably do occur on the Bergson Mountain Gate boundary property areas. We are going to be needing those animals, their offspring of the quail and the roadrunner to repopulate and reco recover our grassland ecosystem. Not all of the Biona wetlands is a wetland. Much of our area is grassland and some is woodland and sand dunes. A multi uh, diverse, much like the Santa Monica Mountains uh, on a smaller scale, just uh, not the major mountain rising. Um, I can go on and on, but as an environmental scientist, as an educator, environmental educator as well, I'm glad to have had this time to speak with you. Be well, everybody. Hi, David Barris. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Next speaker, Lisa Fimiani. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Lisa Fimiani, the Gottlieb Environmental Fellow at the Center for Urban Resilience at Loyola Marymount University and a member of the Wetlands Restoration Principles Coalition. There's 19 reputable nonprofit organizations that have signed onto this coalition, which promotes science-based common sense approaches to restoration projects. While I appreciate the passion of opponents to restoring the Biona wetlands, and I too share some of their concerns. However, I have over 30 years of on the ground experience in the wetlands as a member of the Friends of Biona Wetlands, a docent at the Freshwater Marsh, and former executive director of the Friends. 
And I can tell you that it's time for Biona restoration. And I'm glad the state finally certified a plan. Most of the 600 acres are degraded and could look more like the 200 acres in Area B that the Friends and Audubon have successfully restored by hand over the past 40 years. The problem is we don't have another 40 years, certainly not in my lifetime. So with the help of bulldozers and a well-designed plan to restore and open up the wetlands, we need to do this now. Again, it's <clears throat> time. Speaking for the Friends and Audubon on this specific point, both organizations are among the few permitted to lead educational tours and restoration projects in the Biona wetlands. And I know they will continue to do their best to open the gates to the public after COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. But the majority of the residents of LA, especially underserved communities and our indigenous peoples deserve more access that we provide when the ecological reserve is open to the public. This restoration project will not only restore rare habitats and ecosystem function, it will also provide endangered species and expand their habitats. Further, the project will provide protection from the impact of sea level rise, shielding our communities from excessive flooding and providing habitat for species that will lose their homes up and down the coast. Perhaps the most timely reason, however, in this era of Black Lives Matter is that for thousands of years, the Biona wetlands have been sacred land to the indigenous Gabrielino Tongva people. Because of the current limited access allowed by the state to this land, only permitted organizations are allowed entry into the ecological reserve. These first Americans, as well as thousands of underserved Los Angelinos cannot easily access this last remaining wetland in LA County. All of us paid for it. It's time the wetlands be restored for both wildlife and people to enjoy so all can thrive. I have worked and volunteered to restore and maintain this precious graded ecosystem for a long time. I've seen what can happen when native plants are allowed to come back by removing non-native invasive plants. I've heard children from underserved communities say, this is the best day of my life while taking educational tours of the wetlands. I want to see this happen in my lifetime. And I'm imploring you to join other voices to keep up the pressure to get this done. There will be delays caused by others, but the sooner we can complete this project, the better. The remaining 600 acres of an historic two thousand acre wetlands. No plan is ever perfect, but the plan being proposed offers more than the do nothing and gentle suggestions by some. Opening up the newly restored wetlands with regulated trail systems is absolutely necessary to give Angelinos access to the Biona wetlands that they paid for. Again, it's time. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker, Jane Velez-Mitchell. Jane, go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I am also addressing the proposed destruction of the Biona Wetlands Ecological Reserve, the last coastal wetlands in LA, home to 1,700 species, some endangered, some threatened, documented with photographs, some of which you've seen today. This reckless plan to bulldoze this precious wetlands is not a restoration. Obliterating the habitat that thousands of wild animals call home is not restoration. It's so plainly obvious that the real agenda is to allow the fossil fuel industry to upgrade its aging and crumbling gas storage infrastructure underneath the wetlands. People in the area are smelling gas right now. I don't know if you're aware, but people are reporting that their eyes are burning right now as SoCal Gas does a flurry of rejiggering work piecemeal in desperate anticipation of this bulldozing plan. Are we at risk of another Aliso Canyon style blowout, one of the worst environmental disasters in California history? You know, we have to ask ourselves, why are we destroying nature to accommodate the fossil fuel industry? And by the way, more than 30 nonprofits have said they are against this bulldozing. You can see the list at defendbionawetlands.org. The bulldozing proponents claim they want to provide more public access. Now, right now, as you've heard today, they are denying the public access by locking the gates to usable trails within the wetlands. In essence, 
Think about it. They're artificially creating lack of public access in order to argue they need to destroy the entire area, approximately one square mile, in order to provide said public access. At a time when citizens are losing their homes and struggling financially, this $250 million plan will take about a decade. During that time, there will be no public access. Kids who are 10 today will be in their 20s by the time this plan is completed. And I have to tell you, as a Latina, I find it sad and frankly offensive and discriminatory that all of this destruction is being promoted as a way to help inner city children of color when indeed it will just hurt them. What will be left to see after they destroy everything over the course of a decade? There will be no owls, no foxes, no rare birds left. They will have destroyed a key landing spot for migratory birds. Meanwhile, private school kids from elite backgrounds get tours of the wetlands. They get to experience actual nature. But the less advantaged kids won't get that chance because all of it will have been destroyed in their name. It is positively Orwellian. Face it, they're hiding behind inner city kids to achieve their fossil fuel agenda. Yes, Bayona does need some tender loving care. And that's why an alliance of environmentalists and biologists have proposed not a do-nothing plan, but a detailed, thoughtful, 20-point gentle restoration plan that achieves all the legitimate goals of restoration and significantly more public access without all the needless destruction. You can bulldoze all you want. You're not going to significantly increase the actual square footage people will experience. I urge you to study the gentle restoration plan. Now, it's a nature-based solution, something Governor Newsom has called for. Let's be on the right side of history. We are in the midst of a mass extinction. History will judge us. How can we object to the destruction of wetlands around the world, like the Pantanal in Brazil, when we're doing it ourselves? Please look at this proposal with a critical eye. The wisest and most environmentally sensitive solution is shutting down this fossil fuel hazard and letting the children of LA in to experience nature with a gentle restoration. Thank you. Thank you. We are finished with public speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll move on with uh, the items on the agenda now. 